Hey, in today's video, we're gonna give you some super important warm-ups for bass players and one controversial one, which you may not have come across before. We'll see you inside the video. Hey guys, it's James here from eBay's Guitar and welcome to another episode of our podcast interview series called Real World Bass Heroes. Now I'm here with a fabulous British bass player called Sean Unwin, obviously flying the flag for female bass players. Hey Sean, how are you doing? Hey, I'm, I'm fantastic. How are you? Doing really great, thank you. Now, I came across you a few months ago. For those of you who may know, I have a bit of a guilty pleasure. I am a <laughs> massive, massive Phil Collins fan. And I went and saw a band called And Finally Phil Collins, which is a celebration of Phil Collins' wonderful music that tours the UK. And Sean was their bass player. We got talking afterwards. She had a great vibe, great energy, and is really out in the trenches playing the bass, really making it happen. So I thought I'd get her in. We're gonna do a bunch of videos and we're gonna go behind the scenes of what she does so that you guys can learn some really cool stuff. So just before we get motoring, I'd love to ask you, Sean, why are warm-ups so important? Well, warm-ups are important because you need to get your head in the game. You need to give yourself that time to really go, right, this is what we're gonna do. Get your hands in sync with your mind, but also, you know, you're, you're an athlete. You are a musical athlete. You'd warm up if you were gonna go and play football or play a game of tennis. So just gets you warmed up and it prevents injury as well. Cool. So we're just about to dig into these warm ups, but before we get going, I want you to know there is a completely free PDF that comes with this lesson. So you can see everything Sean's gonna show you written out in standard notation and tab. There's a link in the description below. Also, one more cheeky favor. I was looking at our YouTube statistics not so long back and I was staggered to discover that 80% of people who watch our YouTube videos on a regular basis are not subscribed to the channel. My goal is to get this down to 50%. All you need to do is hit that red like button, which is somewhere around this video, and this will help you out more, it'll help us out more than you know, and will enable us to get more great bass content out there with the likes of guys like Sean and other incredible bass players out to the world. So please hit that red subscribe button. So Sean, what was the controversial warm up? So the controversial warm up is that I get people to run around. What? Running around? Run this around. isn't athletics, this is bass playing. <laughs> What's going on? I just know it's one and the same, you know, it's one and the same. Because, you know, like I said, if you were playing football or tennis, you would you would warm up and stretch. So it's it's key to get the blood flowing and um, it's actually come from medical experts as well. So this suggestion came from BAPAM, which is the British Association for Performing Arts Medicine. And they actually said, run around, get that blood flow going, because it actually helps get you energized and it helps to prevent injury. And was this directly in relation to bass playing? It was, it was. How come? So I um, actually have been injured before. I've had RSI, I've had problems with my shoulders, and that's because my technique wasn't, wasn't appropriate and I wasn't warming up properly. So ever since I've been warming up properly, I've been getting that blood flow going. It's actually prevented injury and, and has, has provided me with longevity. Do you know something? This has just reminded me, literally in the moment, I hadn't thought about this before that, but there's a Victor Wooten thing where he goes about and says, before a game, before he does a gig, he actually goes and plays basketball. Right. So this is the second time I've heard this technique. <laughs> there <laughs> you yeah. go, there you go. And it makes absolute sense because the bass, if you play the electric bass, and both the double bass sitting over in that corner there, they're both incredibly physical instruments. And so, looking after how your muscles work and how you approach that is really super important. Absolutely. Now we're on the instrument, Sean. What is your number one warm up and drill that you do? So my number one warm up is the spider exercise and it's just so important. It's very, very simple, but it's so, so effective. Can you demonstrate how it works? Of course. So um, there's the vertical spider and the horizontal spider. Talk us through the vertical spider. So the vertical spider is where you, I call it a finger per fret. So a finger per fret, you're gonna use Literally a finger per fret. I always say to people to include the open string as well. I think oh, it's very interesting. important go to on. include Why the open that? string. Um, because people, when they go to play lines, in their mind, they don't include the open string. They're, they're like, oh, I don't really want to use the open string. I'm not really used to it. So I think including it into this exercise means it becomes part of the playing psyche, really. Great, I love that. Um, so what go you on, do is you literally go like this. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
And then if you want, you can come back down. Now quickly, why do you love this exercise? It's all about technique. It's not about rushing. It's not about flying through it as quickly as you can. It's all about making sure that you've got a lovely curve to the fingers, that the technique is all there. And you know, you can start up here if, if you want something that's a little bit less strenuous and a little bit closer together. Um, but it builds up your stamina as well because you're at that kind of, you know, the, the most intense part of the neck really. So um, you can play the spider exercise at any point on the neck? Absolutely, any way you like. Okay, quick question. Do you ever play the spider exercise and use the open string and maybe start at the fifth fret? You can do, of course you can. Fantastic. Of course you can. So I'd love to hear you play this with the drum machine so we can hear this in context. Sure. Super cool. Now talk us through the horizontal spider. So the horizontal spider is it's exactly the same concept, but you just go up one string. Cool. And this is to aid uh, shifting. Brilliant. Show so, us how it works. Okay. And again, you can include the open string if you want. Brilliant. Love it. So. Now you can go as far as you want to. I usually go to the 12th fret and then do slightly more vertical here, but you can you can go as far as you want to. Let's hear that one with the drum track then. So let's move on to the second warm up now. You call this the major scale expansion. What is the major scale expansion? I do. And that's because people, when they learn their major scale, they usually learn it in a box shape um, to one octave. Go and on. and just show us what that normally is. So that normally is this. So that is usually the scale that people learn, but there's so many different ways that you can play this. So how scale. do you expand this scale? So you expand it by learning it in a couple of different ways or doing it two octaves, just making sure. So you can play it like this. And then you can carry on up. Then do you play it other ways? You certainly can. So you can change it. I usually say to people that you descend a different way if you can. Go on, show us. Okay. So um, I'll go up a uh, slightly different way as well. Brilliant. Cool. Let's hear what that sounds like with the drum track. Guys, we've got one more warm up to go after this, but I'd love to ask you, what is your favorite warm up? I'd love to find out. In fact, we would love to find out. Please, can you put it in the comments below and let us know? So, the last warm up we're going to do, you call the modal walk. What is the modal walk? So, the modal walk is, uh, isn't a dance, unfortunately. Is it not? Um, <laughs> <laughs> but it's literally where you take the modes of um, usually the major scale. Yep. And you, you quite literally walk through those modes because when we learn scales and modes, again, in that box shape, we, we struggle to kind of use them and bring them out creatively. Brilliant. So I tend to walk through them because then you can get a greater understanding of what you're playing within a scale. So talk us through how this works very slowly. So what this, what, how this works <laughs> is um, you will walk up the first mode. Go and on, then, show us. Okay. So you'll walk up the Ionian. Mm -hmm. 
which you know is the major scale. Brilliant. And then what you tend to do after that is you can either ascend or descend by choice. I would then choose to descend so that Brilliant. you get ascend, descend, ascend, descend. And you would go to the next mode, which is your Dorian mode. Got it. So you would start on the D because that's yeah. the second one and you would come down the Dorian. And then you'd go to the next mode. Which mm -hmm. is? Which is the Phrygian. Go and play that. Spell that. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Not a dyslexic doesn't do that. <laughs> um, so then you start on the next note, which would be E. Go on, show. And then you come down F. Go on. You tell me. Lydian. Yes! Hey! <laughs> Can you guess the next one? Then we are going to go up G mix Lydian. Absolutely. Go on. And then down. A Aeolian, that's a mouthful. Go. And then the last one. Is we're going to go up B Locrian. Go on. And then down. C major. Down C major. Obviously in the upper positions down here. So let's hear what the whole of this exercise sounds like with the drum track. Okay. Guys, that's the end of today's episode with Sean Unwin. It's super cool to have you. It's super cool to also discover the warm-ups you'll do. What I love about this is there are obviously similarities between warm-ups with different bass players, but I've just discovered a couple of new things in how I could be doing my warm-ups differently. So if you've enjoyed this lesson on video with Sean, please do let us know in the comments. Let us know if you'd like to see Sean again on the YouTube channel. We'd love to find out. So guys, if you need more help with your bass playing, head over to ebassguitar.com where me and my team of instructors are there to help you and help you become a better and more advanced bass player. There's the link in the description below where you can join our membership, the Bass Lab Plus, completely free and take it for a test drive. Cheers, I've been James from ebassguitar.com and this is Sean Unwin. Thank you so much for coming on the show today. Thank you and for having me. we will me. see you another time.